Hello everyone, I'm Hernan Cuevas Brun, the Business Development Manager and Scientist of Aerosol Drug Delivery at HC Med Innovations. And my name is Wayan Tai, I'm the Project Manager at HC Med. The topic we would like to present today is the APSD and drug delivery efficiency of a continuous output mode device and a breast actuated mesh nebulizer using turbotelin sulfate. We have divided the presentation in five main sections that cover the objectives of the study, an introduction about the tested devices, the breast actuated mechanism along with the required testing equipment, the message, results, and the key findings in the conclusion. Our study focused on three objectives. First, we aim to examine the aerodynamic particle size distribution of a continuous output mode mesh nebulizer and another operating under breast actuation by nebulizing turbotalin sulfate, a commonly used SAPA formulation. Second, we set up an appropriate apparatus for the testing of the breast actuated device for which we incorporated a mixing inlet into the APSD testing system. Last but not least, we compared the delivered dose performance of the two devices using a breathing simulator in order to investigate the benefits of breast actuation. The two mesh nebulizers used in the study are embedded with the same mesh technology. The Depro mesh nebulizer operates under continuous mode with a mesh membrane in vertical position. This device comes with two lateral vent holes on its aerosol port that face one another introducing turbulence into the airflow. On the other hand, the Adherence mesh nebulizer is a smart breast actuated device that has a horizontally oriented mesh membrane with three openings as vent holes that allow for turbulent airflow to deliver the medication. The breast actuated adherist relies on a pressure sensor to monitor changes in pressure along a channel. The customizable coating then allows to set a threshold at which aerosol is triggered, generating aerosol during a fraction of the inhalation phase only. These periods of sense negative pressure are detected throughout the breathing cycle according to the preset trigger and end points. The device has been designed to be operated under tidal rhythm. The mechanism of the breast actuated mode does not only aim to improve drug delivery efficiency, but also to minimize the emission of fugitive aerosols, which have been described as potentially harmful to people around those receiving their inhalation treatment. As for the testing equipment, aerodynamic particle size distribution analysis is commonly performed with the next generation impactor when testing continuous output nebulizers. However, due to the special characteristics of breast actuation, the incorporation of a mixing inlet is required. The mixing inlet is a component that connects the next generation impactor system to an adjacent breathing simulator, allowing to mimic breathing patterns during the testing while triggering breast actuated functions of the mesh nebulizer. In this study, 2 ml of turbotalin solution was used for a comparison test. For the ABSD assessment, the Copley NGI impactor was set up differently since the aerosol generation mechanism are different for two devices. The details will be explained in the following slides. After each run, we use normal saline solution to collect the APIs from the trays and conduct the quantification by using a spectrometer at the wavelength of 276 nanometer, and to further calculate the MMAD, FPF, and GSD results. On the other hand, a breathing simulator with USP adult breathing pattern was used to examine the different dose and treatment time. The residual mass was also assessed by weighting the device before and after the BIS test. 
the API and the filter membranes in the breathing simulator were extracted also with saline solution and were quantified. All the tests were done in triple cates with two devices. We prepared two configurations for the NGI testing. Firstly, according to the guidelines, for a nebulizer which is in continuous output mode, like DPRO, a pre-cooled NGI impactor and USB throat were set up with a vacuum pump operating at 15 liter per minute to conduct the APSD test. After checking the flow rate with a flow meter, DPRO was directly connected to the mouthpiece adapter of the NGI and started the aerosol generation. When the medication was fully nebulized, the device was then automatically turned off. When it comes to a breast actuated device like a T-RASP, the NGI setup required the addition of a missing inlet. Since the aerosol was only generated during inhalation phases, a breathing simulator was needed to trigger the aerosolization. To connect the NGI with BIS, the missing inlet was attached between the USB throat and the NGI system. A flow controller was needed to regulate the flow from the pump and the breathing simulator. The compressed air generated by a compressor was firstly passed through a water chamber to increase the humidity. While the pump was operating at 30 liters per minute, the compressor was set at approximately 29 liters per minute to balance the pump. The USB adult breathing pattern was used in this test. In this table, you can see the mean values with standard deviation for the parameters from the APSD study of both nebulizers. The missing inlet was not used in the NGI test of continuous output nebulizer while it is required for the breast actuated one. For both devices, the MMAD value were within the respirable range, which are favorable to deep lung deposition. Adhiresp generated droplets with smaller mean particle size, leading to a higher percentage of FPF despite presenting a slightly higher GSD than DPRO. Although the embedded mesh technology is the same for two devices, different orientation of the mesh membrane and the structure of the medication reservoir were assumed to influence the results. In addition, the different in this testing equipment setup might also cause the variations. Mean values for different dose, treatment time, and residual mass are displayed with the snare deviation in this table. We can see the different dose was more than double with adheresp, which was 88%, when compared to DPRO, which remained close to 40%. It demonstrates the benefits of breast actuation function in adheresp, Medication was aerosolizing during inhalation only. At the same time, the treatment time was 2.7 times higher for a DHRASP. However, the treatment time below 10 minutes is still considered reasonable for a volume of 2 ml. The horizontal mesh module of a DHRASP played a key role in the low residual mass post nebulization as the medication concentrated above mesh membrane during the entire treatment. In conclusion, although the two nebulizers were found to perform similarly in the APSD analysis, the breast actuated function was demonstrated to have superior performance, making it suitable for combination products that target high delivery efficiency. Additionally, the Tidal Breeding Actuated System was also shown to provide good performance when triggering aerosol generation, making of this mechanism an important alternative for patients 
who may struggle to use other devices that require coordination or specific flow requirements. These benefits provided by the features in the novel breast actuated device could be further explored in the development of new therapies with high delivery efficiency. Thank you very much for your attention.